From MTN News, you're watching Montana This Morning. I'm Mike Dennison at the Capitol. The first day of the 2021 legislature gets underway, in person and remotely. Coming up, I'll have the details. Today we show you it's possible to be healthy at any age. I caught up with some kids learning about weight training and mindfulness. 6.30 on this uh, Tuesday, Chet Lehman, Matt Elwell, and uh, Holly Brantley will be joining us later. Virtually. Virtually. She's yep. off today, but uh, her work lives on. That's, That's how that exactly works. That's exactly right. You're back inside. Uh, I figured I might as well do that. I'm going back out to mm -hmm. the Billion Auto Group weather patio here in a couple of yep. minutes. Uh, the snow's been off and on throughout the morning, but the mainstay, slick conditions out oh, there. Sure, so yeah. I keep an eye on the roads. Leave some extra time this morning as you're heading out. Temperatures hovering around the freezing mark for most of the area. Initially, we had some rain showers early this morning, followed by some blasts of snow, just these snow bursts uh, rolling through. Uh, and that's leaving things a little slick early on. We're on the backside of the snow, so we're not expecting to see much additional snow throughout the morning. Afternoon's going to bring plenty of sunshine and warmer temperatures, so we do expect to see plenty of melting on these area roadways, especially as you get near the noon hour and beyond daytime temperatures into the mid to upper 30s for most of the area. We're going to break down your area forecast, road conditions, and much more coming up in just a few minutes. In the past two hours here at the studio, <laughs> rain, wind, <laughs> snow, snow, now calm. Yep, it's beautiful. Fun morning. I <laughs> do love Southwest Montana. 631 now our top story this half hour. MTN News has confirmed that Governor Greg Gianforte selecting Gallatin County Sheriff Brian Goodkin to lead the Montana Department of Corrections in his new administration. Newly sworn in governor said, quote, I'm proud to nominate Sheriff Goodkin to join our team to change the culture at the Department of Corrections and help the agency better serve the people of Montana. Brian is as committed as I am to reducing recidivism and improving reentry for individuals in our corrections system, end quote. Now, the sheriff has served Gallatin County for 27 years in the sheriff's office, was also a security specialist at the U.S. Air Force at Malmstrom Air Force Base. Gerkin's position does require confirmation by the Montana State Senate. We're expecting to hear more from Sheriff Gutkin later today. Well, Montana's 2021 legislature got underway yesterday at the state capitol, and despite the pandemic, most lawmakers showed up in person for swearing-in proceedings. As MTN's uh, chief political reporter Mike Dennison tells us, the first day, which is largely ceremonial, was not without its moments of division. While at least some of the session's proceedings will be done remotely or carried out with social distancing at the Capitol, that was mostly not the case on Monday. All but a few of the 100 House members crammed into their chamber for swearing in and electing their leaders for the session. Democratic members wore face masks, but most Republicans did not. In the Senate, however, about half of minority Democrats took part via Zoom from remote locations. Republicans have huge majorities at the 2021 session, 67 to 33 in the House and 31 to 19 in the Senate. Republicans said Monday they have a mandate from voters to enact new Republican Governor Greg Gianforte's agenda for business-friendly policies and less government. But they also said they want to ensure the session is conducted safely. It is my priority to ensure a safe and healthy working environment for all in the Capitol building this session. That includes virtual participation for legislators and constituents. This will be the most accept accessible legislative session in history. And Democrats said they're ready to be part of the discussion as well. Our caucus is ready to build on our investment in infrastructure to protect our gains and access to health care and to make sure that we're investing in public education. These are things that Montana families need to thrive and survive across the state, and we hope that you'll join us. Outside the Capitol, some Helena residents picketed to protest Republicans' refusal to enact stricter health guidelines at the session, including the wearing of masks. And a pro-Trump contingent also rallied in front of the building, where some attendees criticized moderate Republicans for undermining conservative policies. But back inside the Capitol, conservatives lost one of their first skirmishes on the House floor. They tried to impose a set of temporary House rules, which they said would give conservative Republican leadership a clear hand to enact the will of the voters. I, for one, do not want to face the people back home who told me, please do as we asked you. Please enforce rules that are going to free up the people in the state of Montana and allow them to exercise personal responsibility and personal freedoms, which have been denied to them in the last 10 months. That move failed on a 42 to 58 vote, with 25 Republicans joining all 33 House Democrats to defeat it. That means conservative and moderate Republicans must work out a set of rules they can agree on as the session gets started this week. The rest of this week is mostly organizational meetings, with committees figuring out the technological landscape, 
for remote testimony and other social distancing steps. But on Thursday, Governor Greg Gianforte presents his proposed changes to the state budget. And work on that budget and other issues will begin in earnest. At the Capitol, Mike Dennison, MTN News. By the way, the session is scheduled to continue through the month of April. Mike Dennison will be there for all of it and will continue to follow it here on Montana This Morning. Meantime, last September, Gallatin County Commissioners uh, voted unanimously not to abandon Bremer Creek Road, but establish a seasonal closure. This morning, the Gallatin County Commission will hold its first meeting of the year to discuss the closure dates as well as enforcement. According to county documents, the road is recommended to close to motor vehicles between March 1st and June 1st. Now, many in the community voiced their opposition to abandoning the road last fall because the route is a popular site for outdoor recreation. You can watch that meeting online from the county's website or in person at the Gallatin County Courthouse Community Room. The meeting is scheduled to begin at 9 o'clock this morning and there will be opportunity for public comment. Well, are you ready to get moving in 2021 after so much isolation in 2020? Maybe you're still not ready to leave your home, but you still want to make fitness part of your New Year's goals. You're not alone. Our Holly Brantley shows us how people right here in Bozeman are making it happen. Is getting healthy part of your 2021 goals or maybe are you using things like your circumstances or the pandemic as an excuse? Well, I caught up with two groups that just might inspire you. First, meet two ladies in their 70s who never miss a workout. One, two, three, four. Strengthening and conditioning, yoga, silver sneakers. There's lots of classes here. Cycling, weightlifting, Yoga, I love yoga. 70-year-old Dee King laces up every day for her workout at the Gallatin Valley YMCA. If I'm down, I come to the Y. It's never unhappy at the Y. It's like a family. And they say your name. Hi, Dee. She says when the pandemic hit, she never considered letting her physical health slip. And there was no stopping her no excuses attitude when it comes to physical fitness. She says the benefits outweigh the risk and she feels safe at the YMCA. And I'm so thankful that I've had a, a life of fitness inside and out. 72 year old Sunny Davis agrees. She often joins via Zoom. When you get older and you retire, it's very easy to sit back and not do anything, um, especially physical or going out and doing things. Um, I think it provides a social outlet to see other people. These people that come here, they are so inspiring. Tasha Schaefer is a group fitness instructor. But these guys um, that come in, I don't, they're dedicated and they just come in and work their hearts out. Schaefer says she's proud of the dozens of guests over age 50 like Sunny and Dee that don't let obstacles like age, technology, or a global pandemic keep them from being active. When I first started teaching Silver Sneakers, they were, the classes when you get certified, they aren't as hard. And I came here, started teaching them, and they're like, it needs to be harder, harder. So like, Every single class, I feel like I'm like upping the strength in there just to make it to their level because they're so strong. As for Dee and Sunny, they say the stamina they feel is a priceless reward and they hope to inspire others at any age to get fit. I feel like I can be an example for them. I feel it's my job now to keep myself healthy, not just for me, but for my partner and for my family. Now, local doctors tell me they stand by CDC recommendations for adults 65 and older. Those include at least two and a half hours of moderate activity, such as brisk walking. That's at least two days a week. Also, at least two days a week of activities that strengthen muscles and also activities that improve balance, like standing on one foot. Now, as for just a few of the benefits, longer life expectancy, improved brain health, and a reduced risk of depression and anxiety. Thank you, Holly. 639 now, a Helena World War II veteran and founder of Race to the Sky Sled Dog Race celebrated his 100th birthday yesterday. Dave Armstrong came to Montana in 1943 in a train car full of sled dogs bound for Rimini. Soldiers of Camp Rimini trained the sled dogs to take part in ground operations in Nazi-controlled parts of Europe. Dog teams ended up being used to rescue downed pilots and planes in winter conditions. In 1986, the retired Armstrong helped found Montana's Governor's Cup sled dog race, which became Race to the Sky. Armstrong competed in the race well into his 80s. Happy birthday. I love that. 
640 now. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, if you didn't get your stimulus check or deposit it yet, you may want to keep your eye out for how it will come to you. After the break, we'll explain three ways you can get that payment. But first, here's Gail King with a look at what's coming up at 7 o'clock on CBS This Morning. Good morning to you ahead on CBS This Morning. We're in Georgia for today's two crucial Senate runoff elections. We'll also talk with the state's lieutenant governor. Plus, studies estimate around 2 million coronavirus survivors still have debilitating symptoms with no treatment for them. We'll take you inside these new clinics to help what's called the long haulers as they fight to recover. And the host of the hit show Finding Your Roots, that's Henry Louis Gates Jr. joins us. See the surprising discovery he made in my family tree. It was a surprise. We'll see you at 7 o'clock on the dot.